Welcome back to Defenders of the Last Stand. We're playing the Lightning of the Ancients scenario. The game's taking forever, but we're still having fun with it. All right, we have Frank's turn. He's sitting here right now in Last Stand. Of course, he has seven actions. As we know, he's got no injuries, no wounds. I think what we're going to do is we're going to creep up to Hazard Gulch, try and snag that Karma token, then make our way over to Hadesville Auntie Saloon and maybe zap Crank with Lightning the Ancients, try and knock him down a little bit. I mean, that's kind of the plan, but of course, uh, the, everything we plan here usually uh, ends up not working properly. But anyway, right now, Bramble's sitting at two health. Uh, not really worried about Bramble because we have to roll a natural six to defeat her anyway. And uh, it doesn't matter if she's down to one health, we still need that six. Uh, Crank, though, has a lot of tech cards. I'd like to get him down as low as possible. He's sitting at three health right now. So we can Lightning the Ancients him this turn. We can maybe knock him down to one health. He'd be a lot easier to take out. Puke is nasty. He's at two health. But we have to discard uh, cards when we attack him. Any uh, cards we use to attack him, we have to automatically, randomly discard one and another one for every mutation we have. And both of our rangers right now have one mutation, so that, that means each ranger attacking Puke has to discard two cards before we even do anything to attack him. So I'd like to get him down to one health, but he's sitting at two. All right, let's go over to Frank's area. We're going to take a look at all the stuff that he has. Uh, after, of course, we take a look at his cards quickly. So he's got one cross gun symbol. He's got a couple of kite symbols. All of the cards he has, though, are good for attacking the leaders remaining. So I kind of hate dumping any off. We have the special portrait of the ancient goddess. We can dump one card, get another one. But I think at the moment we're just going to hang on to all Frank's cards. And I don't even know if we're going to use any for travel because the double dice cards are really good for attacking. So keeping that in mind, all right, let's go to Frank's area now, take a look at his uh, abilities and what other things he has. All right, so having a quick look at Frank, of course he's got his seven actions. He's got his trapper ability, all traps are out on the board. The last one that hasn't been triggered sitting at the U.S. Air Base. It might, may or may it trigger, we'll see if it happens. Monstrosity Hunter, he gets to roll uh, dice. If he rolls a natural six against them, counts as two successes uh, against a monstrosity, but not against puke. And additionally, once per turn, you can re-roll all failed dice against a monstrosity. So that's... Good, we did take a look at the one monstrosity last time on his turn. It was a Skeeter and not a good thing to try to attack. So there you have that. Delicate Hands, of course, if he does a scavenge token, messes it up, he can put it back. If he has a Karma token, which we don't have, he's going to try and get one, though, I think. He's got Ranger Patrol. This is a huge, huge thing to do. It's going to take him probably a couple of full turns. I don't know if we have that luxury of that time. We got the leaders down pretty good. I think we got to try to take them out. Portrait of the Ancient Goddess. He can discard one card and just redraw another one. I'm not going to do it, though. I think we're going to keep the cards he has. And he has Visions. At the end of his turn, when he's drawing a Raider card, if he doesn't like the Raider card he draws, he can bounce it. But then we have to deal with the second one. So there's that. All right, let's get back to the board. We'll have Frank take his turn. All right, so this is not high excitement, but he's going to spend one, two actions. I know, he's hanging on to his cards, though. Two actions to get to Hazard Gulch. He wants the Karma token. So I'm just going to readjust the camera a little bit here because I'm going to be rolling some dice up in this area. And uh, yeah, he's going to be attacking the Earther War Parties up there. If he can wipe them out, we know how well Frank attacks. <laughs> then he can pick up the Karma token. So we're going to readjust the camera. He's going to be attacking. There's two Earther War Parties there. They get annihilated on a 4+. plus. Let's hope Frank has some good luck rolling some dice. All right, I hope this is going to focus okay. We're going to put the dice tray in here. So for his third action, he will be attacking the Earther War Parties. Hitting on a 4+. plus. We're rolling two dice because there's two of them. Come on, Frank, do something. He did something. He got one of them eliminated. Okay, um, oh boy. Okay, he's going to spend another action. We really want to get rid of that final one because then he can spend an action to pick up a karma token. So come on, we need a 50-50 chance. We need a 4, 5, or 6. Did we get a 4? Yes, Frank, finally having, I guess, partial luck uh, succeeding. So that was... Uh, his fourth action, yeah, two to get there, two attacks, 
For his fifth action, he will be picking up the Karma token, because you can do that when there's nobody there. Excellent. So now he has a Karma token. He can fire off the Lightning of the Ancients. And I said I was not going to spend any of my cards, but I kind of want to use the Lightning of the Ancients right now. So we're going to take the one puke motorcycle card. I know we need the puke cards because we have to randomly discard. But we're going to use the motorcycle card, which allows Frank to move two spaces. I'm going to zoom the camera or rearrange it a little bit here. And we're going to have Frank move two spaces. And yes, Frank could have blasted uh, Bramble with the Lightning of the Ancients because he's adjacent, but we're not doing that. We're moving two spaces, Motorcycle 1, Obama's Road 2 to Auntie's Saloon. And now, yes indeed, he is next adjacent to Crank. And Crank is going to get zapped for Frank's final action. So I'm going to get out the dice tray and rearrange the camera a little bit here. And we're going to see if we can take some hit points off of Crank, who's sitting right now at 3. All right, so we have Frank here firing off the Lightning of the Ancients at Crank. And is this going to be... Oh yeah, looking good. All right, we get three dice. Any fives or sixes is a hit point uh, against Crank. And yeah, but we can't kill him. So if we get three hits, uh, he can only go down to one hit point. All leaders can only be uh, taken down to one hit point by... Uh, all other means. The only way to actually defeat a leader is you have to attack them with your cards. Oh my goodness. As I throw dice around. Alright, let's see. Come on, let's get some fives and sixes. And we get... Uh, well, we get a six. Uh, just one. So we had to, of course, spend our karma token, which we did. Fire Lightning the Ancients. Crank is going from three health down to two. I would have loved two hits there, but we didn't get it. But at least we do now have Crank knocked down to 2 health. So we're sitting currently, Bramble's at 2 health, Crank's at 2 health, Puke's at 2 health, and we're out of actions. So I'm going to zoom the camera out, and we're going to process the end of Frank's turn. He's going to get a couple of Defender cards, and then we're going to take a look at that Raider card, which he can bounce, and then we have to add a Raider adjacent somewhere to Last Stand. All right, I don't know if that was a good turn or not. I just, I don't know. All right, let's grab the two Defender cards. I know, the game's going on indefinitely. And a couple, yes, more motorcycle cards. Just what we need. But at least we have a motorcycle bomber card. We can use that for movement. Another puke card. Okay, okay. Uh, so I guess ending off, we're going to take a look at all of his cards. And these are all of his cards. So we've got, he's got four dice against puke, but he has to randomly discard two of them. Puke's at two health. And of course, you can't attack puke. He's sitting currently at uh, Mutant Mountain with two monstrosities and a... Um, road rage gang with him so we'd have to eliminate all of them before we can attack puke so that's a tall tall order all right raider card now remember he has visions we can bounce it uh let's see how bad it is all right internet needle gets one techie mob not a problem hazard gulch gets an earth or war party not a problem puke is going to move to white peak where the heck is white peak is eight and drop off our final mutation that's exactly where midnight pearl is Ooh, and a new mission if there are two or fewer missions available mass and draw missions till oh, i don't oh man they're available the only bad thing about this card is we get puke dropping off a monstrosity that would be the final one and then if puke goes on midnight pearl's turn it's going to be game over uh so Oh boy, I think we're going to process this one. I think we are, because we don't get any overruns. Mm. Okay, Living Dangerously. In Internet Needle, which is right here, is going to get one techie mob. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Maybe this is a bad idea, I don't know. And Hazard Gulch, which is way up at the top, gets an Earth or War Party. I don't know if you can quite see that, but there it is. Earth or War Party, Hazard Gulch. Puke now is going to move to White Peak which is exactly where Midnight Pearl is. So let's go ahead and move Puke to White Peak, and he's going to dump off the final monstrosity. All right, so Puke has, goes on a little bit of a flying trip, drops in on Midnight Pearl, dropping the last monstrosity right here as well. Now, the way I understand the rules uh, is if you need to place a monstrosity on the board and you can't, Puke flies right to last stand. 
and you lose the game. So there's that. And then new mission, if there are two or fewer missions, draw a new one and place one. Yeah, so we only have one mission sitting in Last Stand, so we will be drawing another mission. So I'm going to zoom out, we're going to put another mission down, and then we do need to add a raider adjacent to a location to Last Stand as the final thing to do for the turn. All right, so we're going to be grabbing another ranger mission. And the ranger mission we get this time. I throw my goggles on so I can see monstrosity hunt. Only the bravest ranger set out to destroy a monstrosity. We might have to have Frank start doing that. Uh, combat mission, defeat one monstrosity. Okay, succeed. When you have defeated a monstrosity, gain the reward. Reward monstrosity tracker. Each time you are in a location with a monstrosity, you may scout it without spending an action. Hmm, okay. That's, well, okay. It is what it is. Um, we, they are, both of our rangers have missions right now, so there's that. Okay, uh, that's basically it. I'm going to, I guess, uh, wrap it up. That was Frank's turn. He's sitting here at Auntie Saloon now. So up next, of course, will be Midnight Pearl. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, and likes. This is Defenders of the Last Stand, Lightning of the Ancients. We have all three remaining leaders sitting now at two health, but we have all monstrosities on the board. So if we have puke going next time, we're, we're, we're done. So thanks so much, and we'll see you next time, Defenders of the Last Stand, Lightning of the Ancients. And of course, I forgot to put a raider adjacent to Last Stand as the final thing we do. So I'm going to put one here right in Auntie's Saloon with Frank. Uh, I guess they're having a drink together but uh, that's probably going to be short-lived. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you next time, hopefully sooner rather than later. For Defenders of Last Stand, Lightning of the Ancients, it will be Midnight Pearl's turn next.